Now Christmas can be a perilous time. One first one has to get a Christmas tree. Now those of you who have no sense of the spirit of Christmas can nip down to the corner store and get one of those cheap and nasty black ones. Shame on you. Shame on you. Oh, not this little black duck. He's going to hold hog. He's even going to take the children out of the farm to choose their own. Which, uh, <laughs> when I reflect on it now, was not such a good idea. So out we went to the farm where the children managed to find one. Not too big, not too small. You sure you want this one? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, stand back. I got out the chainsaw, started up, started trimming the, the branches around the base of the tree. Above the chainsaw, I could hear the excited, screaming excitement about something from the children as they pointed towards the top of the tree. Now it took about 30 seconds for it to register what the children had found. In a horrifying realization, I screamed, get in the car! It's bloody hornets! <laughs> they took one look at the hornets, one look at me, and needed no further urging. Christ, that was fun. Anyone stung? Oh, no. Thank God, that's good. I couldn't deal with your mother on that one, not to mention the screaming and yelling and grizzling in the car. Uh, I think we better find another one, kids. I, I might add, I thought the plastic one was having a lot of appeal, not very appealing right now. A little voice from the back said, how are you going to cut the tree down, Dad? Just about then I had to realise that the horrifying realisation struck me that in my haste to get in the car I left the chainsaw there running with the hornets. Now there's one thing hornets get really excited about, it's loud noises and vibrations. Oh, well, there's nothing for it. I can't let the little ones down, I'll just have to sneak over there to the chainsaw, bring it back to the car and switch it off and maybe they won't notice. Uh, okay, okay, here goes. Oh, God. Oh, I wish I'd got that damn plastic one now. Uh, well, I've got it back to the car without electrocution. Oh, so I thought. As I turned off the chainsaw, the children in the car were getting very excited and pointing frantically at something. I looked around to see what they were pointing at. And to my horror, I, I saw a little black swarm coming towards the car. Christ! I threw the chainsaw in the back and scrambled for it in the car. They swarmed all over the car, the children. Get your windows up tight, kids! As I closed the vent. One of the children was getting a little concerned. Do you think they can get in the car, Dad? Oh, Christ. Why didn't I buy that plastic one, I thought. No, no, children! I said with more enthusiasm than I felt. Uh, the thought of it was just too much to contemplate. As I drove off to find another tree, hoping the hell they would leave or be blown off. We eventually found one. I got it into the half end of the boot with an enormous struggle. Now, having got it home and onto the front van, the battle had only just begun. First, I had to make sure it was not too small and that it would fit through the door. Uh, down the hall, through the, through, the, through the lounge room door, being careful. Being very careful not to break any precious thing on the way. Now I had it in the lounge, over the corner where it was to stand. First get it into the Christmas tree stand, painted the appropriate red and green. And the exciting standing it up in the corner, tucking it into the corner, stabilizing guy, ro guy ropes on it to make sure it didn't fall over. And then after a short rest, a strong cup of tea or two, decorating the tree began with the different coloured tinsels wrapped around the, about the tree, the glass balls, more ornaments placed on the tree, all so Christmas like. The children worked feverishly to finish the job. They climbed up and down the ladder getting everything just in the right place. Finally it was finished. Then I could relax for a moment, but only for a moment. It was dinner time. Then everyone into the shower must get ready for carols by candlelight. Finally, Carol's by Carlton was over and the children climbed into bed and were asleep. But the work goes on, wrapping the presents, etc, etc, etc. Then finally into bed. It was been a most trying day. An exhausting time as I found out myself as my head hit the pillow on Christmas Eve. At then godly hour of 3.30am. Yes, that's right, nearly 4am. Oh God, help me. 
The inevitable thunder of little feet down the path, followed by howls and screams, which took a only seem to be delayed at 5 a.m. Oh, God! What the hell? Then it went up. The yell. Then it been! Then it been! What? What? Who's me? What? We've been burgled! No. Oh, God! Well, we had a break in. Oh, oh it's alright, Tony Cedar. Oh, I'm over and get some peace. Oh, God. Help me. I've only just got to bed, and it was so I was enjoying it too. There is no peace. Well, here I am, seated by the tree, getting, doing the ritual, handing out of the presents under the tree. Finally, with the first annual ritual over, we settle down to a semblance of order and a brief moment of peace. When we settle down to breakfast at 8 a.m., extracting myself from and through the obstacle course of presents and erroneous mixture of ribbons, wrapping paper, disregarded for boxes, containers, etc, etc, etc. I made, I made, I might add, I made damn good care not to step on some pressure of it. Even more importantly, not to do myself a nasty injury. After that, he was wearing and fortifying, fortifying for the feasting and merriment that was to come with Christmas lunch, extending right into the afternoon. So we had lunch. Mary making continued into the afternoon onwards into the evening, eating, drinking, consuming large quantities of Christmas pudding, punch, including a bottle of what I was told with a kind of Scotch whiskey when I was doing it for Christmas. But, but <coughs> so by now it was getting very late in the evening, and I was starting to feel a ro- a rather disconcerted with, by this strange feeling that had come over me. In fact, I felt like I was starting to get a slightly hallucinated. Now, I don't know whether I sort of drank too many different things, including the whiskey. The other terrifying possibility was that the Christmas pudding was off on a couch. It had been hung out in the woodshed, uh, too long out in the woodshed. Well, it hadn't been hanging out there since October. With this frightening possibility, I went to bed where I slept to toss and turn, waking up Boxing Day. I feeling like I've been boxing all night, most likely. I came to the conclusion, and I'll not mention the brand, the, <coughs> the conclusion that the whiskey, and I'll not mention the brand, was slightly off on account of the fact that after feeling queer the night before, now I had a very bad headache. As for the Christmas pudding, I won't say who made it, but I will say this, I never wanted to be hallucinated again. Never! Never again. Well, not doing it again. Throw the ancient yuletide carol.